Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this, this is Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be five eyeshadow palettes that I wanted to go back to. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Today's video is going to be about five eyeshadow palettes that I selected for the month of October that I wanted to get some more use out of. These are all older palettes. Some of these cover stories had been rearranged and I just wanted to make sure that I went back to them because some of these are my favorite fall color stories and some of them I also felt could be great for fall but I had never used them in that way. So these were the palettes I wanted to go back to. We're going to be talking about Modern Renaissance, Sigma Enchanted, Desert Dusk, and then two rearranged color stories. So these palettes are no longer the way they used to be. I'm talking about my Colourpop Flutterby which contains Colourpop's uh, wine and only and or kid you not shades and then in the Too Faced palette I have all of the shades I kept from gingerbread uh, Sweet peach and the original chocolate bar in case you're new here. Hi, my name is Micah I live in the Netherlands I like to come on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes SSA Catrice reviews Getting the use out of my makeup and because I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone I do myself a snow angel and if you would like to join the snow angel club then definitely click subscribe down below So yeah five palettes that I wanted to go back to and I did one look with each of these uh, And I'm just going to chat about my experience There's one of these that I'm actually wearing on my face today And the reason why I didn't get to do that many looks with these is because I actually tried out More new things than I had ante anticipated this month um uh, for one, uh, if you saw my last eyeshadow palette review that went live last week, there was an additional Catrice Fall Limited Edition collection that really sparked my interest and I wanted to try it, so I put that in that review. And then, of course, earlier this month, we also got the drop with the Disney Villains collab that Essence and Catrice did, so there were just a lot of other things that started happening and I, I'm only one person, there's only so much that I can do, but yeah, before I'm sitting down to film this video, I did use all of these at least once, so I can tell you a little bit about it. So let me start the video off by talking about the Flutterby that contains my Wine and Only and Orchid You Nut shades. I ended up keeping most of the shimmers from those two palettes and only five mattes. There were 18 pans I had to choose from and I had to, of course, discard a few. And I feel that now that I've used it again, it still suffers from what I feel a lot of Colourpop purple palettes suffer from, which is that it's very, very warm toned. I'm pretty sure that between the seven shimmers that are in here, I kept all the shimmers from these two palettes, save for maybe one. And I feel I don't get a really good purple shimmer in here. I get things that are burgundy or wine colored leaning, but I don't get that really nice royal purple shimmer. And that's something that I would still love to see Colourpop do at some point. I was able to recreate the royal purple because this is what I've got on my eyes today. And you can see that I have this royal purple-esque shade all over the lid. But it's actually two shades. I popped this one all over the lid and then I took this shade. I don't remember what these shade names are, but I took this shade, which is like one of those like pinky purpley sort of shades, and that's what I topped over it. So I feel that I still have purples in here now. These two are really nice purple mattes. This one as well, but it's more like wine colored rather than you know, truly, truly purple, then this is definitely more of a red and this is actually more of a pink. Um, so in terms of mattes, I feel I now have the purples from Colourpop that I'd like to have, but in the entire array of shimmers, I feel I'm lacking that really nice, more vibrant purple shimmer for sure. I think I still have the one that was in one of the other palettes that I have that I've also rearranged. So I'm pretty sure that if I pull out my Strawberry Milkshake, which has those rearranged shades in, that I do have something like that. But between those two palettes, it was not there. Whereas Orchid You Not was their purple palette and everybody was saying how it's like the best purple palette Colourpop has ever done. But I feel that in the shimmer options, it was just a bit lacking. Um, the Wine and Only was, of course, a more burgundy leaning color story. So I kind of expected this to be more warm toned, putting it on the eyes for sure. But that's like, you know, in terms of like perfect purple palettes, it's not that perfect just yet. I did really enjoy that like more pink tone matte. It's what I used to blend out the top part of this look. And I really enjoyed the way that came about. Like these two pair really nicely. This is what's in the crease. 
blended it out with this, popped this all over the lid, topped it off with this. That's in the lower, on the lower lash line. No, in the inner corner. This is on the lower lash line. I think together with a little bit of this shade here um, because I didn't want it to be too dark right there. So yeah, a really nice successful look. These haven't changed um, performance or anything like that. It's still a good palette. I like that I've rearranged it. It just gives me a little bit more versatility because the wine and only was too red for me to be going up like using it all the time. And the Orchid You Not I felt was a bit too limited. So that's why I do feel it's a successful color story for me. But in terms of like a good purple color story, this is still not my go-to. So let's stick with the rearranged color stories for a minute. So in my Gingerbread Spice, I have put the shades that I've kept from three Too Faced palettes. So this is the Chocolate Bar, Gingerbread, and Sweet Peach. That's what's inside here. And what I did, I did a shade with like a row of lighter uh, shimmers, a row of more like mid-tone, deeper shimmers, and then a full row of mattes in the bottom. And I did one really quick look. I believe I went in with this as a transition, and then I popped this all over the lid, and I just took one of these lighter shimmers in the inner corner. I literally had like five minutes to get ready when I was using this. But, you know, it was, it was still nice enough, but this is still suffering from what I felt all three of those color, uh, color pop, Too Faced color stories were suffering from for me, which is that they are too dark. So any look I'll do with this, like a lot of the Too Faced palettes that I actually decluttered because I made this, um, just has so many deeper options. It's like, you can see actually, if you look at that top row and then the middle row, there aren't a lot of mid-tone shimmers to really bridge that gap that will be better on my skin tone. It's all quite deep. Granted, I did keep my favorite shades from these palettes, so this is just going to give me a super glam, but still good for everyday kind of look. And I do think I've kept some shades here that can make it work. Um, this now smells of peaches and cocoa, so I'm not entirely sure. I, I, I never liked the scents of these Too Faced palettes anyway, but yeah, there's still this really weird scent that now mixes, which, you know, gingerbread peach and cocoa powder. It's just, it's not a good thing. But yeah, I do like this color story a little bit better now that it's more tailored for what I personally need. Um, is it going to be my favorite palette? No, but I'm glad I still have my favorite shades from those three Too Faced palettes. And now I feel a little less bad about can, I, about decluttering those. Speaking of declutters, one palette that I wanted to put in this video is the Modern Renaissance because this is one that when I filmed my eyeshadow palette collection video in August, I, I was like afterwards just feeling like maybe I should do with my ABA shadows what I have now done with my Too Faced shadows where I take some of these palettes and I pop some of these shades out and I rearrange the color stories. Because from the Modern Renaissance, this is the only part of the palette I use. Well, I do use these two shimmers, but these shades I just never use. Um, and also something like this orange, I don't use either. So I did my standard smoky berry look that I do every fall with this. And I did it and I was like, oh, but this is really good. <laughs> so I do have to say that I really enjoy the look that I did with this again. So there's definitely like five, maybe six shades from this that I'd like to keep. So I'd have to work out how many shades I want to declutter from other palettes and see if I can like, you know, fuse some things together or rearrange it somehow. Um, but yeah, this is definitely one where I'm like, Maybe I should just rearrange it. Maybe I still have an empty palette lying about and I can just pop out the shades I wanna keep from a few of my ABH palettes and like make a single palette with it. I don't know yet what I'm gonna do, but this is definitely a contender for being ripped apart and I will just be using my hair dryer method if I were to go about it. But now that I look at it, there's not a whole lot of room between the pan and the actual cardboard of this. So I'm not sure if I'd have to destroy this completely or if I could just soften the glue by holding my hair dryer over this like I did with the Too Faced palette. But yeah, this is definitely one where I'm like, I'm considering it, but now that I've used it again and I've, I've seen that look of myself again, I really liked it. Plus, What's also good to know is that when I was using this guy, I did film, or at least I'm trying to make shorts. I'm trying to go and start a TikTok in November. Um, so I'm starting, sort of pre-filming lots of little things. And 
I edited down the look I did with this and I was like, oh, I can actually do this, like make an under one minute video of me creating makeup looks. I'm not entirely sure yet about the settings and all that, but it's something I'm playing around with and I hope to be able to post the first shorts because whatever I'm going to post on TikTok, I plan on posting on this channel as a short, um, but I still have to figure out how that works. Um, so that's something I'm going to be doing as uh, before I upload this video for sure. But yeah, I did film that very look. So if you want to see how that came together and what shades I actually use, then you will be able to see that shortly, hopefully. Speaking of shorts, I also filmed one of the looks that I did with the Huda Beauty, but this is the only palette where I did do two looks because I wanted to show you my favorite look that I actually like doing with this palette. And this is the Desert Dusk, in case you're unfamiliar. Most people here have probably already decluttered this. I don't know if anybody still has it. I always feel like I'm the only person on the planet hanging on to older things. My favorite look to do with this palette, this in the crease, that all over the lid, that in the inner corner, and that's it. Maybe this, I think I use this as liner. It's such a great everyday look, and with this palette, I've only ever seen people really going into this side of the palette. But this side of the palette has some really good, really nice neutrals. I always ignore the glitter. Like, that's the reason why I ended up picking this over the, what was it called? Was it the rose metals? Whatever, that first one she did, and then remastered, rose gold and then the remaster palette came out. It just had so many of these glitter shades and I was like, I can't deal. So um, yeah, I, uh, I just used those shades and that was fine. And then the second look I did, I again filmed to hopefully create a short with for you um, or on TikTok. So if you also have TikTok, then you can already start following me. It's going to be at floating in dreams underscore because floating in dreams was already taken. Uh, so at floating in dreams underscore is going to be my TikTok. So hopefully this week things are starting to pop up on there and then the days I pose there I'll also make sure to post it as a short on here um so yeah that was my favorite warm toned look that I just recreated with a little bit of the purple and the red like this saffron shade I love a bit of amber in the crease and I think what I did was pop a little bit of that shimmer on top and then uh use this in the inner corner or on the lower lash line I don't remember exactly what I did yeah, I still like this. Mine does not have any issues with it, like having gone bad. Same with the Modern, Re Modern Renaissance. Like, these are old palettes, you guys. I think I got this the fall I moved into this place. So this is five years, five years old, and I can still use it. My tip for keeping your makeup for as long as possible, dry, dark place. Don't keep it in your bathroom, a dry, dark place. Don't, like, I don't care how cute it looks, don't put them on the bookshelf. It's not going to make your makeup last and it's not going to be the most sanitary way of displaying it. So that's why I'm always using like clean brushes, clean fingers when you do go into your palettes. That's really important too. Um, I have personally never had an issue from using old expired makeup, especially if it's like a powder, like a shadow. I've never had an issue with that. Would I use these on other people and feel okay gifting them to other people? No, which is why whenever I do declutters, a lot of what goes, what I say I declutter just ends up in the bin because a lot of the things I get rid of are really, really old and they're not safe to resell to other people if I've already had them for this long. Uh, and then finally, we were talking about the Sigma Enchanted and I already told you this when I showed you what I was going to be using in, uh, in this month's uh, selection that this was the part of the palette I wanted to play around with. So like Modern Renaissance, it's like half the palette I don't like, but this I thought fall color story. And I love the look I created with this, this green shimmer. It's so sparkly and fun and just so, so pretty. And then I ended up using Metamorphosis in the inner corner and like dragging it out all the way up to the top like I have been doing a lot lately and I'm loving it. And this was such a good look. I really, really enjoyed it. So this is definitely one, just for that one look, I'm probably going to keep it around forever. Um, and I didn't use any of those shades down there. But yeah, so uh, I was right. This has some really good elements. I love the greens that it has. I love that metamorphosis shades. I love the uh, matte, like mauve tones that we get. I mean, essentially, like this is a mauve. But this brown has that pinky mauve undertone. I love it. 
and then you just get a really good dark brown, you get something warm toned. I think that if this palette had just been this like eight pan, I'd have liked it even better. I would have probably loved it more. Uh, it just has too many, like, like these two shades I don't need. I don't need that gold. But the gold is pretty with the greens. I did do that when I first reviewed this. I did a look with that, but I was like, if I limit myself to just these eight shades, what would happen? And I really liked the look I did then. So I feel that, is this then worth the price point if you were to buy this now? Maybe not. It's not the most unique look ever, but I do really appreciate those greens and that dark green in here. It's a little thin when you swatch it, and it definitely takes a brush and a bit of building up to get it to full intensity, but it's such a great smoke out shade. Like forest green mattes should be in more palettes. That's what I'm gonna advocate for, for sure. So yeah, Sigma Enchanted was really su successful, and that's how I feel about all five of these palettes that I tried for you again in this month. I was really happy with what these had to offer and especially now that I've tried Modern Renaissance again, I'm sort of like torn. See, this is this is why whenever I do declutter, some people get annoyed with me for not swatching things. But if I use things and if I swatch things, I fall in love with it all over again. And my declutters would not do half as well as they are doing because I would just not be able to get rid of anything. So yeah, that's definitely it. I will have a new selection for you in November. There are a couple of color stories that I have already planned out that I wanna go for. I haven't fully decided yet, so remember if you have any requests of older palettes that you know I have that you would like me to go back to, then definitely make sure you leave a comment below because then I can make that work for you. Um, I'm still sort of looking for like one or two color stories. So I will update you on the color stories that I have selected in my Shop My Stash, which is already gonna go up on Tuesday. So by that time, I must have made a decision. Then I'll show you, in case you're unfamiliar, in my Shop My Stash, I'll show you exactly what I use every month. So if you want a sneak peek of what's coming up in a video like this, or what eyeshadow palettes I will be reviewing that month, then check out my shop, my stash, because that's where sort of like the whole thing starts. Those always go live on the first Tuesday of the month, in case you were wondering. So first Tuesday of the month, which just so happens to be November 1st, is a Tuesday. Um, and November 1st is also going to be, hopefully, I'm saying this right now, like a week in advance as I'm filming this, but I'm, I'm planning a bit of a rebrand. So come November, you can expect this, like my banner to change, to have some different things, like a different look on the blog. That's what I'm working on. I'm also hopefully going to be able to change the intro around a little bit again. So if things start changing in the next few weeks, then bear with me because I'm sort of figuring out a little bit of a rebrand for the channel and the blog at the moment. So it's still going to be floating in dreams. We're still gonna be doing the same things that I have been doing for years, months sometimes. Um, but yeah, there are going to be some like visual changes, you could say. So that's all I wanted to say to you today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos every single week. So if you'd like to stay tuned for more and then I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.